Welcome. In this session on estimating a minimizer for a function that has a scalar argument, we'll explore backtracking. And we'll explore one particular kind of backtracking that's called Armijo backtracking. Let's remember where we are. In previous sessions, what we did was we looked at fixed step size, and then we looked at a way to exponentially back off of that step size to try to find a minimizer. When we did that, what we actually ended up doing is something like this. So this was our current estimate, and then we had a possible estimate that came from taking a large step size that the user provided us. And in, in some situations, that produces a, an estimate that's actually worse than what we started with. And we can't just sit there. We have to do something, right? So what we did was we said, well, let's exponentially back off. And we picked a back, a back off parameter, beta, that we set to one half. That's a, that's a very common setting. And what that will do is that will, that will reduce the step size. Now, that in what that will do, so let's write that down, is that exponential back off, which is what I like to call that, what that will do is that will select the largest, the largest step that improves the estimate. And in previous sessions, we were concerned about that, that largest property because taking the largest, in this case, the largest would take us to the opposite side of that minimizer. And so we would begin an oscillation back and forth and back and forth, which might be good, might be bad, but in general, it's a little bit concerning. So here is the idea. Let's consider, let's consider changing the step. So we'll change the step and the slope test, which is what we will think of this as. What could that look like? Well, our back off, so the back off sequence, that looked like when we pick a back off parameter beta equal to one half, that looked like we would try the step and then we would try one half of the step and then one quarter of the step and so on. So here is how backtracking in one example works. And this is our Miho backtracking specifically. And Larry Armijo, in 1964, developed and proved this method for a function that has a vector argument. And part of this involves um, conditions on the function locally that are called Lipschitz con conditions. We, you, can, you can check uh, Larry Armijo's article. You can check what the Lipschitz conditions are. For now, we'll simply try to understand what this is at all. So our the original inequality test that we had, and that is for back off, was we were saying that f at t k plus 1 had to be an improvement on the function at tk. And if we did that, we were in this situation where what we were doing was we were selecting the largest step 
that was possibly acceptable. And what Armijo proved was that, so the Armijo condition, Mijo, is we will loop while. And the mathematical condition that he had was we begin with the same idea as the exponential back off. So we take our current estimate and then we add some exponentially backed off beta times the user's provided step times the direction. This direction will change as we go through the iteration. And we evaluate the function there. And we want to loop while it's greater than or equal to our current level. And in exponential back off, that's where we stop. Here's the difference with the Armijo, is he says if we add, we'll later refer to this as the alpha parameter, it is the absolute value of the derivative at our current estimate over 2, and this is involved with the Lipschitz conditions, times will exponentially back off by this amount. And so our, if we stopped here, we would have our exponential back off. When we add this condition, what we have is our Miho backtracking. So this can be described graphically. And let's go through some computer-generated examples to understand that. Let's take a look at what this gives us. So alpha is that absolute value of the first derivative evaluated our current estimate divided by 2. Beta is the backtracking parameter that we're going to use for searching. And here's what happens when we go through the first loop. Let's observe that if we were at, if we were to use the gradient inequality, we know that no um, value of the function will be above the gradient line. So the first thing that happens in the uh, Armijo iterations is we, we do an immediate back off. So in that immediate back off, in this case, it's actually a bit counterintuitive. What it's doing is it's giving us an even steeper line. That's all right. This is all computational. So what we see is that starting here, our next estimate is here. And if we took uh, the first Armijo backtracking step, and this point is above this line, so that is unacceptably large. We would then take a second step. And we would back off by one half, and that would take us to here. And now what's happening is that inequality that Armijo is suggesting that we use has taken this and it's diluting the slope. So here the slope is very strongly downward. Now it's not so strongly downward. And now we're at a point that's closer to our initial estimate and it's still above the Armijo comparison line. What happens if we back off once more? Well, what will happen is our exponential back off will take us over to approximately here, and then this will be exponentially raised towards zero. Now, let's pause for a moment and understand why that would happen. This alpha term is the absolute value of the derivative at our current estimate divided by 2. So that's, got, that's a number that's going to be greater than or equal to 0. And that's a constant. So what's happening is we're taking this, this it, what started out as a gradient line, and then we're multiplying it by this backtracking value. And then as we increase the betas, we're exponentially decaying this slope towards zero. And when we exponentially decay the slope towards zero, geometrically, that means we're exponentially raising the line to have a zero slope, which is flat. 
And so that's a geometrical description of why Armijo backtracking works, is it's a combination of exponential back off and exponential weakening of this line. So let's take one more step for our sample dynamical system. Here we saw exactly what we predicted, is that this is backed off by one half, so it takes us to here, and this slope is halfway up towards flat, and now what's happened is that this new step gives us an estimate that is underneath the Armijo line, and that means that it's now acceptable. So what we've done is we've taken a step based off of the user's estimate of a step size, and we're going to select a, back, select a step by backtracking, and that backtracking is a combination of two things. It's an exponential back off and an exponential raising of our condition. And Armijo proved that for a, I'll call it a well-behaved function, for a well-behaved function that's near a local minimizer, this is guaranteed to converge. Let's take a look at what some pseudocode might look like. So the pseudocode would have the same prelude as we had for fixed steps. And while we, uh, the convergence criteria could probably be the same, but what changes is that instead of just taking the user's uh, estimate of the step size s, what we're going to do is we're going to calculate s. So what we'll do is we'll start out with s being the user's estimate. And we'll calculate that alpha, which is the absolute value of the derivative divided by 2. Now what we'll have is a while. So while the new function is not an improvement on the current function value plus this um, exponentially changing slope condition, we will exponentially back off that um, step estimate. And that, when we're finished this little while loop, what we've done is we've estimated using our Miho backtracking what step size we should be taking. Then we'll simply continue on having that step size, we'll use our fixed step size code and our pseudocode is complete. So what have we learned in this entire lecture? Well, we've learned that fixed step size is a way to get around uh, the user providing us with a second derivative information. And this, but this a disadvantage is that the user now has to know something about what they're searching. It's unclear how to automate that search choice. Uh, what we did was we used a local linear approximation, and in the end, what we chose was the Armijo condition, which gives us a bound on what's happening. And these exponential searches turned out to work well in practice. Armijo backtracking or some other form of backtracking is part of most practical optimization codes that I've come across.